print this. Snap this into here. There's no step three. <laughs> There's no step three. With GPU June drawn to a close once more, perhaps you, like me, were inspired to collect some of the interesting and influential graphics cards produced over the years. And uh, now you need somewhere to put them. For that reason, I'm relaunching my GPU storage stands today. I originally launched these alongside the first version of my 3D principal test benches back in January of 2022, but they weren't quite fully baked, and a lot of folks had trouble getting them to work. So let's go into what makes this release so much better than version 1, despite looking mostly identical. All set? Bottoms up. As before, these stands are designed to facilitate high-density storage of graphics cards and other expansion cards, while providing protection to vulnerable backside SMD components along with easy random access. Version 2 introduces new sizes for the stands, as well as a sizing guide to help you tailor your stands to both your expansion card's PCB thicknesses, as well as your 3D printer's specific quirks. Each sizing tool includes several snippets of the edge connector grip portion of the GPU stand with varying slot widths, as indicated on the tool. So you can simply insert the card's edge connector into the slots on the sizing tool to determine which size you'll need to print. Obviously, printing your own stands means you'll be able to customize them. You can, of course, print in different colors to maybe indicate each card's bus connector, or perhaps different colors to indicate GPU manufacturer. The choice is entirely yours. Each stand also includes a spine that fits conventional tape labels for easy identification of your cards while they're on shelves. As previously, I've modeled stands to fit PCI and AGP cards, ISA cards, and PCI Express cards in 1, 2, 3, and now 4 slot variants. The stands are relatively quick to print and require a minimum amount of material. They're designed to work with the card's existing I.O. shield and assist the card in standing upright while, of course, enabling high-density storage and easy random access. Now to the fun part, printing these models and getting your GPU storage problem under control. I recommend starting with printing a stand or two, doesn't really matter what size, just to get your slicer settings dialed in. I strongly suggest turning on a brim when printing the stands themselves to dramatically improve bed adhesion, and depending on how good your printer's part cooling is, you may want to use tree supports for the overhang here, especially for the ISA card stands as this angle approaches horizontal. Once you've got some good-looking stands printing, turn off your slicer's brim and print the sizing tool using identical settings. There are chamfers in the bottom of the sizing tool to help prevent elephant's foot, aka excessive first layer squish, from influencing your sizing measurements. Using identical settings for the sizing tool and the stands means the stands will be accurate to the guide, and you can just rattle off a handful of prints to your printer's SD card ready to mass produce. As for settings, uh, if you're using an 0.4mm nozzle, I recommend two walls and 12.5% infill. I'm using an 0.6mm nozzle, so I've been printing mine with one wall and 10% infill, and they've been working great. Layer height doesn't really matter. I've used everything from 0.2 to 0.25 on an 0.4mm nozzle, all the way up to 0.35 on my 0.6mm nozzle. The stands interface with your expansion cards on the horizontal plane only, so wall thickness is much more of a factor in print accuracy than layer height is. Larger layer heights will, of course, reduce print time, which is always helpful when you have a large number of cards to store. I generally print one stand at a time, as I've had very little success printing multiples on a single build plate. You could probably get away with shoving two stands into opposite corners of your build plate, though, and using the sequence settings in your slicer to print each stand one after the other. I haven't tried that trick yet, though. Your mileage may vary. But that's it! Once you're successfully printing stands that fit your cards correctly, uh, I would save that preset in your slicer, and then you can reuse it when you need to print more stands in the future. I've worked to make this system compatible with a wide range of printers, and I'm happy to say that I've got versions of the sizing guide that can be printed on printers as small as the Ender 2 at a 150x150mm build plate. There is, of course, also a version that works with the Prusa Mini and the Kingrune KP3S at 180mm, and then, of course, the full-size version for Ender 3 and Prusa i3 size printers with 220mm print beds. So that's that's it! Print the sizing tool, use it to measure your cards, and print the stand you need. Couldn't be simpler. 
Links to the STLs are in the description and pinned comment. As with the test benches, they're going to be available from Thingiverse and Prusa Printables. Happy printing, and may the PC parts be ever in your favor.